are going to be working in Pam Pastel and a little bit of colored pencil. I got my reference photo from Unsplash, but you can find this if you want to download it and draw it along with me. You can find this over at my website. The link is in the video description. I am working on Canson Me Tens. This is the smooth side. And you've often heard me talk about when I work with Pam Pastels, I'll work on the rough side that has a little bit more grip to it for the pastels to stick to. I have actually found that the Pam Pastels stick to the smooth side just fine and then I get smoother results. It actually makes it a little easier for me. So that is what I'm going with there. We've got my Pam Pastels here. This is a set of, what is it, 20? And the, this set, I do recommend if you get these, get the little holder, it's like a palette. Actually, hold it up here so you can see it a little bit better. But it's a palette where all the little circles go into, the discs, and they just pop out. You can replace those as needed, but it's, it's so convenient. In the set of 20, I have found to be everything I need. I have not had to replace any of these since I bought them. Like you can mix these grit just like you would with paint. I'm going to be using soft tools to lay my colors in there. And you can see I've got a little bit of blue on there. It's teal, it doesn't matter. It's close enough to what I'm going for here. I do want more of an ultramarine blue. And I'm just gonna pick some of that up and you can see as I do this, I will just let these colors mix together a bit. So I don't even really worry about those getting muddy in between. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying that in for the blue part up here. Now, one of the things that a lot of people have a problem with when they're doing sunsets or sunrises is making an ugly, like a muddy greenish tone when the blues make meet in with the yellows. Here's the trick, or the oranges. Here's the trick. You wanna put purples or magentas in between. So you have yellows and oranges, then magentas and purples, then blue. That is going to keep your sunset look or sunrise, whichever you're going with, it'll keep you from ending up with muddy green where the blue and the green meet. And realistically, if you look outside, more often than not, you get a bit of purple or pink in between your green or your blue sky and the bright oranges or yellows. So it's a, just a really easy way to make sure you don't end up with mud. Assuming you don't want mud. And I'm just gonna keep loading more of that. And I'm just mixing that white. It doesn't matter like that I get the perfect color each time, like the perfect balance of white versus blue. I'm just gonna keep adding to that and layering and smoothing that out as I go. Load that up some more. I wanna get that color saturation really nice. That's a little bit off camera. Let's see if I can smooth that up, straighten that a bit. Again, the reference photo is over at my website, link in the description. I know I got that part right. Actually, I say I know I got that part right, but it could be the wrong link, so, you know. I guess I shouldn't make promises. I don't know if I can keep. Now, my mat will come to about here. So I need to make sure that my blue comes down far enough, being that I'm, I always draw this bigger than what the mat will be. That way I'm not fighting like a little bit of the white of the paper showing through. I've done that so many times on colored pencil pieces and had to go back and fill that part in. So it's a little bit out of the area, but I also wanna make sure that my blue comes down far enough that I'm not just judging it by where the top of the tape is because the top of the tape is not actually the top of the size of the piece, if that makes any sense. Let's see, Carol asked if I, I mix pastels with any solution. No, I, and they make a blending something for these. I've not tried it. I should order it just so I could try it so I would at least know what I was talking about. I don't think it needs it. Like if there's not been a single time where I was working with pan pastels and thought, oh, I, well, I wish these would blend better. I wish I had a blender. Like I, I just cannot see when I would want that. But I should probably, I need to order some art supplies anyway. So maybe I'll throw that in the cart as well. I'm just adding more of this ultramarine blue right over it. And the reason that I'm going with an ultramarine blue, I want that to just be a nice transition into my purpley gray colors. Now, that's probably as far, well, let's come a little bit farther over here. That's probably far enough. Now, make sure that your streaks are side to side. And this may seem like common sense, but I've seen it done where people started making vertical lines. If I've got a streak, like right here, there's a slightly harsh line, no big deal because it just looks like a cloud. Whenever you're doing skies, make your life easier. You, you, I don't have to have it perfectly smooth as long as the streaks are going horizontally. Okay, I'm gonna pull this little holder off. 
We're gonna switch this out with a new one. I'm going to skip down into the oranges now because if I used the purpley tones, the purple grays, that is going to muddy this up and I'm gonna have to change it again sooner. If I go, if I want my oranges to stay really true, it's better if I go ahead and get that in now while there's no other color on this. So I'm gonna use this bright yellow color first. And where do I want my mountains? Let's just kind of get an idea of where those are going to go. Now I will want to blend my sky lower than I blend, uh, or lower than the, where the mountains are going to be. Otherwise, if I don't do that, I don't want to end up with like a weird glow. Now I'm gonna do my mountain scene a little bit different. It's a straight out in the reference photo, just a straight black area for the silhouette. I'm gonna get a little fancy and go with dark purples and make it fade a little bit prettier. Now notice that I'm just going with this straight bright yellow first. Also, I do not want, right now, see how it comes here and it starts sloping down? Don't do that, just pull that, even that out. We don't want the sky to feel like it's tilting here. Now I'm gonna start pulling in the darker colors. Now notice too, I started with the lighter colors and I'm working my way into the darker ones. It's much easier than doing the reverse. So we're gonna add some darker oranges. That really looks like Cheeto dust. I'm just gonna let this one, now yours does not need to be perfect. Mine sure as heck not perfect. It does not need to be exact to the reference photo to be absolutely beautiful. Something like this, you can take some artistic liberties and still have it be stunning. So don't get super stressed. This is a perfect project. If you are new to pastel, pan pastels or you just want something quick, this is such a perfect thing to get started with. Now notice here, I've got a little bit of a deeper orange here, a little bit up there. You can't really tell in the video because it's not picking that up. What we've got here is the darker orange and then here and here, and I've got a lighter orange there. Next, I need to get into now deeper oranges. So I'm going to be mixing red, actually red, and a little bit of this, is this one burnt sienna? What is this one? Nope, red iron oxide. It looks like red, yeah, I guess that makes sense, red oxide. That would be what I would use it with acrylics. So let's just mix some of that. Let's get some red in there. And I don't have to clean this. I can go, because I'm going to a darker color, I can just use what was, leave the orange that was on there where it is. Gonna pull a little bit in here. We wanna make sure these streaks are horizontal. This is what I was talking about before. Try to avoid, you don't want your streaks. Now yeah, clouds can be horizontal, but a lot of times when you're doing landscapes and such, it's better if you just keep yours a little bit more straight. Some may be tilted, but overall, horizontal is the safer way to go. Keep it parallel to the top and bottom of the, the paper. This is something I see a lot, water. Let's say you're painting a stream going by. The ripples in the water, the stream may curve, the ripples, you want completely horizontal. You start tilting those and it makes the viewer feel like their head needs to tilt with it. It's not creative, it's not cute, it doesn't look good. When you're doing certain things, it will look better with very rare exceptions. There's always exceptions to everything with art, but very rare exceptions. It, you're just safer, it will look better. Try to keep these a little bit more horizontal. I don't wanna follow the angle that the mountain has, and that's something that I see a lot, where if the mountain comes at this angle, the artist wants to make the cloud follow that angle. It's obvious what you're doing. You're, you're naturally, it's normal to want to do that. It doesn't look good though. Try to straighten that out as much as you can. And I'm not saying take a ruler, it doesn't need to be that straight. But do you straighten that out a bit? Okay, I'm gonna start pulling now and mixing into that a magenta tone. So you can just come right over here, get some of that magenta. So we get that pinkish tone. And I'll let that go right along that edge as it starts pulling up. So some of the orange off my brush, or brush, the soft tool, it is mixing in with that. And it just gives you this really nice soft color. Now, if you get too much pigment right now, I wanna blend with the same tool. I just have a paper towel here. I'm just wiping that off. An old rag, anything like that would work. T-shirts work great. They're the perfect texture. I'm gonna pull this up just around that edge. I 
and I'm gonna pull this pink down a little bit more into that yellow and peach. So I've got this really pretty transition there. Now mine is a bit more yellow than the reference photo. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of white. I'm gonna wipe this brush off and I'm gonna take a little bit of, oh, hold on though, because that, first I'm gonna wipe off a little bit. Okay, this is actually a good, good little lesson here. So I wanna add a bit of white to my yellow just to get more of a cream color, but look at how much blue is in that. It's actually overexposed, it's way worse in person. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel and wipe a bit of that off so I've got a clean spot. What would have happened right there if I would have gone into that with the yellow, the orange on my brush, if I would have gone into that with the blue, I would have just made a muddy mess that would have got, I would have gotten green streaks in my yellow, which is exactly what I'm trying to avoid. So now I can take a little bit of white I'm just gonna lighten a bit in here. Much better. Now be careful, you can see I'm blending, I'm going back and forth quite a bit over this. Watch that, it is definitely possible to overdo that and you end up with one solid color instead of the definite light cream color into the yellows and oranges and pinks and all of it. We want the variation of all these colors together. We are going to start pulling in. I've got to make this purpley gray color. Now, I actually wouldn't mind if mine was a little bit more color saturated than the reference photo, but I still need it to be a little bit grayish. So I'm gonna mix my magenta and purple, and I'm gonna throw in, let's see, do I wanna mix this separately? Maybe not. I'm gonna pull a little bit of black and a little bit of white, and that's gonna give me a grayish tone. And I can blend and mix this as we go. So I'm just gonna go with purples for now. Yeah, there's a little bit of black in that. I'm gonna add um, more black and white into it to gray it up a bit in a moment here. Actually, I could just, while that is on the brush, come in here. Now, I did not bother wiping the orange off because if the orange mixes in with this, it gives me more of a grayish tone. When you mix orange and purple, you're gonna get kind of a neutral, calm, grayish brown tone. That's fine for these clouds. So we've got this lighter area that comes through here. And I'm just using straight white now with what le is left on my brush. Now, if any of that blue pulls into this, it doesn't matter. Blue can mix in with the purple, no problem. We just don't want it mixing in with the orange and the yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and let that just give me a soft transition here between the blue so I don't have any of the paper showing, even though I'll be pulling a bunch of purple over that. But may as well cover the paper now while we're at it. See how I'm being a little bit more streaky? I've got some of these angles now coming down, so I start getting that poofy cloud look. Okay, back to making it look dark. I'm just gonna go with a thick purple first and then put black on top. It was a bit easier. Again, all the supplies I'm using are listed in the video description. Now, in just a moment here, I'm gonna spray some, um, spray a bit of Spectra Fix so that this will seal this layer down and it allows me to put more on top without just making product fall off the paper. So if it gets to that point where you've built up a lot and it's not sticking and it's not as vibrant as you want, putting down a workable fixative can help. I'm gonna mix a bit more of that magenta and red just for this transition in here.
a little bit poofy, little half circles in there. Now that's getting a little bit of black for me loading it earlier. I wanna grab a new brush that will just be moving forward with the oranges. So I'm gonna load just some of the orange right in this transition here, just to blend that a bit. So we get that nice soft look, there we go. Let's pull a bit of red too. Now, right in between the purple, I'm just gonna dab that a bit. And then lightly go over that. And a bit more with the orange as I move down. And I'm gonna spray this with Spectrafix in just a moment because this is starting to, I've got so much product on the paper right now, it needs to be sealed down a bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch back to the purple. Now I do wanna get a bit of purple up here. So we've got these nice streaky looks. Now this comes at an angle. So when I was talking about you don't want things leaning down, I'm not saying never. There's obviously clouds are not always gonna be perfectly straight. I mean, don't follow when you get around the mountains, you're not trying to follow your streaks with the mountain. If you're doing a river, you're not following the, the ripples in the water with the edge of the water line. Now that I've got this on there too, after I spray this, I'm gonna go a little bit darker to, even with the blue. We'll really get that color saturation in there. Okay, let me grab the Spectrafix. So this is Spectrafix, link should be in the video description. And the reason that I go with this one is it doesn't darken the work. A lot of the, the Vixitives, when you spray it, it makes it the pastel, the color gets really, really dark. Does not happen with Spectrafix. So this isn't a fine mist sprayer. The bottle that it comes in, you're gonna have heavier droplets that you end up, it doesn't ruin anything, well usually, it doesn't ruin anything, it's just that when it dries, you have to blend those out if it leaves like a ring where the water droplet was, or not water droplet, but the Spectrafix droplet. With the Find Mist sprayer, it's, uh, it's less likely to happen. So what I'm going to do is just very lightly, I'm at a distance, I don't know if you can really see, but I'm gonna put a light layer on there. Now I'm going to dry that with a hair dryer. So plug your ears. Oh, somebody had asked me, I actually get this question a lot. Do I wear any kind of protection when I work with the pastels? I don't work with normal pastel pencils. I would feel differently then. Those have a tendency to leave more like dry dust in the air that you would be breathing in and that could potentially be cause issues. This with the, the pan pastels, there's really very little fallout. Like I'm rubbing my hand at the bottom of my easel, like almost nothing is coming off on my fingers. This is very, it, it really doesn't leave a bunch of dust in the air. So it's not something that I'm, <coughs> that I'm personally, as I cough, as I that I'm personally very concerned with. So I'm not wearing a mask with this. But if I were using normal pastel pencils, that is something that you wanna research and look into because that could be potentially dangerous for you to be breathing in. I want another one with just blue, so let's go ahead and grab another brush. And I just wanna get this blue a bit, the saturation a bit deeper. See, now as I go over it, because I put the Spectrafix, now actually, let's back that up a little bit. The Spectrafix isn't sealing it. Like if I run my hand across this, I'm gonna have a ton of pastel on my hands. It's not sealing it so that nothing ever comes off. But what it does is keep it so that less does come off. Less is going to fall off over time. It helps it to ad adhere better to the paper. And as I add an additional layer, then that sticks even better because the previous layer is like sealed down. I'm gonna darken this up. There we go, so that's a much nicer. Now in person, and I'll hold this up so you can see, my blue is more of an ultramarine blue. At least on my camera, it's coming out a little bit on the dark side. Let me show you what mine looks like. 
this camera always gets the color a little bit better. So it's a bit darker, a bit more ultramarine versus it looks more like a phalo blue, almost moving closer to teal on the color wheel or green on the color wheel than what it does. It's like definitely a ultramarine blue there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back into these purples. So I've got some magenta, some purple. Yeah, see how much better that purple, the color saturation is so much stronger now because I had sprayed that with the Spectrafix. Can you do it without? Sure, it just makes your life a little bit easier if you can use that workable fixative, fixative first. Now I'm gonna be pulling a little bit of black and white on this too over the purple to get gray it up just a bit once we get a bit further into this. Let's get a few more purple streaks up into the blue. Not too crazy, just the hint. One of the things that I like too, if you notice after I use the Spectrafix, I will use a hair dryer to dry that really quick. It'll help pull the paper. If I put too much Spectrafix, it'll warp a little bit. It'll pull it back into shape, but it also will blow off any excess that was floating around that needs to be removed from the paper. Kind of a double purpose there. Okay, let's get some more of the darks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling in a little bit of black into that purple. Let's darken this up in here. Now, here's one thing to notice. I don't think it'll really show that well, but as I'm layering this, I'm having a bit of fall off from the black is getting here. Do not, and I cannot stress this enough, don't use your hand, and you shouldn't do this anyway, but do not, especially right now, use your hand to streak that away. You will streak it. It'll, it'll leave a mark, just blow on it. Get that away that way, or I don't have it in here. There's this little rocket thing that you can squeeze and it blows, or a hair dryer, it'll blow that out. Blow that off. Don't use your hand. Don't use, like a lot of times when I'm using colored pencil, I have a drafting brush somewhere, I don't know where, obviously I don't use it often, but you can use a drafting brush, not on this. On this, just blow away any excess that you need to because if you get it, that would have left a black streak in my yellow clouds. And you, I mean, you can go over it, you can try to lift it with the eraser, but then you have to rework. It's just, it's not worth the trouble. Just, just don't use your hand to wipe away those little marks. I might be speaking from experience. I'm not gonna admit if I did though. Okay, let's move that a bit. So I'm not pushing very hard. That's another thing to notice at this point, if you push very hard, you'll start to remove some of the, the pastel instead of just smoothing out what's there. I'm gonna pull a bit more blue in. So I'm just gonna work back and forth. So we have that hint of blue in some of that one. I'm gonna wipe this brush off on my paper towel. So I'm still using the one with the purple. And I'm gonna go ahead and load that with white. I'm gonna have to pull a bit of magenta into this as well. a little bit right now. So we've got that pinkish tone. Now one thing you wanna keep in mind too, if you're trying to make colors exact, which I, obviously on a sky like this, it doesn't need to be, but let's say you were trying to, you're working on a portrait and you really want that skin tone exact or whatever it is you're doing, make sure that the color on your monitor is right. I am working on those oranges and it's fun. It doesn't matter in my case because I don't care if my oranges are a bit more of a reddish tone. If those of you over on Patreon, you you've saw the one that I posted today. Mine have a bit more of a reddish orange tone, whereas the reference photo was more of a yellowy green, like a little bit closer to that side of the color wheel. It doesn't matter as long as you've got 
got your values right. But if you are worried about getting the exact colors, make sure your monitor is the same because my monitor in here versus the one that I download and edit the photos is not the same. The one in my office is much more accurate than the one that I use in my reference photos here. So, and you can adjust the color usually um, to an extent. So you can calibrate that, but it is something to be aware of. Cause it was really obvious on the piece I'm working on right now. Like I said, I don't really care that mine's more orangey red. Um, but if it was a portrait, that might look a little weird. Especially like a pet portrait would really matter. I've had that happen before where it was a corgi and mine was mine was either too red or too orange. I forget what it was. Mine was too way, far one way or another because the monitor was off from the photo. It was an easy fix, but that is something you want to be aware of. And I usually find that the color balance on my phone is more accurate. So I can often put the photo on my phone and hold that kind of, you know, look at it while I'm looking at the other monitor and it makes it really obvious. So we're starting to get the hint of clouds in here. See what I'm doing? They're slightly curved. They're not perfectly straight lines here. I am definitely going to order that blender tonight so I can test that. If any of you have used the, the blender from Pam Pastels, what did you think about it? Was it necessary? Could you pass? I mean, obviously you can pass. I've never used it and I've been perfectly happy with it, but I'm wondering now. I'm going to let a little bit of this pull down so I get some little poofs. Let's get a little bit more white in there. Again, this is one of those things where I'm taking a few artistic liberties that does not need to be exact. I'm just taking these liberties based on, I've done a lot of skies before and I know I like how that looks. So I go ahead and pull a little bit of those clouds down into the orange. that down a little bit more too. So one of the things that's interesting with this photo, usually I tell people the, the cloud should be in front of the moon, but in this case, these clouds are just misty. They are in front of the moon, but they're super, super misty. So as I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, I need to pull more blue. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little bit more blue because I wanna make it make sure that it doesn't look, like right now my clouds look a little bit too opaque to me. I wanna make it sure it looks like you can see the sky behind these clouds. So that's where I'm gonna go ahead and pull this blue. And this will give me more of a translucent look to the streaks in the sky. That way it makes sense that you're seeing this crescent moon through these clouds. Plus it looks really pretty. So bonus there. Okay, I wanna pull a little bit of orange. Let's wipe that off. Dark frogs are singing. Don't go crazy if you pull orange in here. It can make mud very, very quickly. So I just want the hint of it, just a little. Okay. While I'm at it, let's get some more magenta in there. Really hyping up this color saturation now. Rebecca said, I've used the blender. I picked it up by mistake, but it does help with the blending of the colors. Helps to make smooth transition of the color. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to definitely have to pick that up. Okay. A little bit of magenta in here. I'm running low on quite a few pencils. Like I think I'm completely out of Derwent, uh, Derwent Lightfast uh, white. I've got a few colors I need to buy. And Derwent Drawing White. Okay, I like that. Now we're going to start on the mountains in the background. 
So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and start with purples and I'm gonna let that fade a little bit into the background so we get a little bit of depth, more depth on those mountains than what the reference photo has. So let's start, and I'm gonna mix that, let the, the purples and the magentas mix together. That is not dark enough at all. Let's go red and magenta and see how that sticks. There we go. So there's a mountain crest in the back. Next, we'll switch over to more purples. So see how it's just really, really soft. So we get darker and darker as we move forward on this mountain. Magenta in this one. Okay, see now I'm all excited to try the blender for these now that I've heard from one of you guys. I should have asked you guys earlier. You always give me good advice. But again, like you don't have to have the blender. As you can see, it works fine without. But I want to try it now. Okay. I'm going to switch over to black. Actually, I'm going to switch to the pointy brush so I can get sharper edges here. You can see my mountain range, not even close to the same as the reference photo. Doesn't need to be. I mean, if, you, if somebody had a specific mountain range that was by their house, uh, mountains that they knew, obviously then go with what that looks like. But here, I don't even know where this is, so not gonna worry about it. Just make it pretty. And I'll have to do a couple of layers here to get that black really dark. Now the moon I am going to do with the colored pencil, so I'm not going to worry about that until after we get this in. And I can also use a colored pencil if I want to make these the edges of the mountain range. I don't think I do though, but you could do that to, to sharpen up the edges if you wanted it to be more crisp. But I think I like the softness. And I just make my life easier and bring this little guy over here so I don't have to keep reaching back. So it's just loading it right here. I'm going to smooth this and then I'm going to go ahead and spray it with Spectrafix and then go over it again so I can get it a bit darker. Points a bit more defined though. Okay. Now I'm going to move this out of the way. So I've got this right now by my easel. I don't want this where I'm spraying the Spectrafix. I don't want Spectrafix landing on that. We don't want to seal it down there. I guess I don't need this on my phone either. Okay, now I'm gonna dry that. Now, let's put one more coat of black. Let's 
see how much darker that, well, I don't know if it shows up for my, as much for you guys, but because I've sealed it, I can now get this much, much darker. And again, I say seal it, but if I ran my hand across it, there's going to be a ton of color that comes off. So don't feel like that means you're free to like rest your arm across it. You're not, not that you should do that anyway on artwork. Remember people juices are not archival, but this is now super dark. I am really happy with how this came out. This sort of thing, even if you're more advanced with your art, I love taking like a break sometimes, especially like right now I'm working on those super busy oranges. It's so nice to do something like this that's so pretty and so quick to get done. It's just like instant satis satisfaction. I mean, it's worth spending the time on the bigger pieces, but these little ones in between are really enjoyable. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is hold this up to decide which size moon. I'm thinking this one would be good. And I'm going to scooch mine a little to the side so it's not just in the center. Yeah, that should work. There we go. And then I'm just going to fill that in this way. Be careful, do not put your hand on the paper. While I'm not, I'm getting a little close, so let's go ahead and grab a piece of glassine. Let's just play it safe and put that there. Now I can rest my hand and not even worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna go over with a more opaque white and I wanna start with softer. Here we go, so that is a darker orange. I think it's a little too dark. Let's try the Burnt Sienna. This one is, there, that color works. So just along the edge here, I need this orange color. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just needed it to show up. And we've got this ring right around the edge of the moon. I mean, it's not perfectly smooth. Like it's a little fuzzy. It's behind the clouds. So I'm not trying to make this look like he's sitting in front of them. There's a little bit of an orange glow around him too. So I'm gonna come back through with the pan pastels before I do the white of the moon. Now that I can see where he goes. I wanna get, if you really look at that photo, there is a little bit of a glow that he is casting on the clouds. Because again, remember, the clouds are technically in front. And this is something, this is a mistake I often see artists make. They'll make it so the moon is in front of the clouds. Clouds will always be in front of the moon. In this case, though, these clouds are translucent. And so it kind of gives you that weird look. But that is something that you do want to be aware of. White and orange. There may be more orange. I'm just gonna go slightly. I can really go right over the moon. Soften that out. I'm gonna use my pinky just a little bit to soften that. Because sometimes, as much as I try to keep my hands off the artwork, sometimes your pinky will blend things better than anything else. Just keep your hands clean. Light glow around him, just a little bit. Okay. Back with the glassine, and now I can define that moon, and this guy will be done. So now let's use a white pencil. Actually, what is this one? Isn't even white, is it? It's rubbed off. I can't see. Let's switch over to Derwent Light Fast White. There we go. I'm pushing a little bit harder so that that really shows up. Now let's say I really could not get this bright enough, like color was just not sticking. I would put another coat of Spectrafix over it and that will probably fix it. Could also use Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture would be another archival option. So 
there's a very good chance I am going to, when I can get my face up closer to this, go ahead and make little adjustments. Um, I want to clean up that edge a bit. This way I can push pretty hard with that pencil and make it really smooth. Just on that outer edge. Now I'm going to take the orange again. Look how nice that shows up now over the white. I love this type of work. It has that like almost fantasy feel to it. Anything with a crescent moon, I jump to that conclusion. Okay, I think we're good. Actually, I take it back. I want a little bit more orange, actually. I'm just gonna use my finger for that and just smudge a little orange around this because I can go softer than what I can get with a soft tool just for that. A little bit of a glow. There we go. Okay, and let me pull this in front. Actually, let me clean my hands off so I don't leave fingerprints where they're not supposed to be. So I will spray this, I'll sign it, and then I'll spray it one more time with Spectrafix. I think I'm gonna go over the moon a little bit more with the white so that that shows up. But that way you can see the color a lot better. Oh, I like this guy. I love that sunset look. They're so fun to do and they're so, they always come out so pretty. Hey, you, yes you, I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my God, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supply sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.